Hello Shortcut, Stephen here. This is the preview for the price list that will go out Wednesday the 22nd of May at 9pm Sydney time. This preview is the prog rock soundtrack punk city pop and classic rock. Yeah. Um, I just got back. I'm sorry I'm a day late. I just got back from a work trip to Bangkok where I found this record shop, M. Tanacorn. And what's in here will be the subject of a video that I'll put out later this week. And it's pretty great. And this bag is awesome too. Look at this. Funk up your life. When I was leaving the shop, the proprietor, who'd had to run everything by his wife as we were leaving, he whispered, that's me. And that's my wife. <laughs> anyway. The records in there are pretty special, and I'll save that as a treat for later in the week. So, what have we got today? Well, I am going to start with this. This album is a soundtrack. In fact, it's arguably two soundtracks to start. This is an album called Suspiria by an Italian prog rock band called Goblin. This is the Japanese first press. I love obis that blend into the record cover. How beautiful is that? An amazing sleeve. There's some of the band on the back. This might give you an idea of what the movie's like. So for those of you who are not aware, Suspiria is a horror movie directed by an Italian horror movie director, predominantly worked in the 70s and 80s, called Dario Argento. And Suspiria is probably his most famous movie. It was remade recently uh, by, by his daughter, I think it was his daughter, yeah, um, Asia Argento. It is a pretty heady movie. It's about a, um, a woman who joins a dance school without realizing that it's a front for a coven of witches. <laughs> and, oh, the first 15 minutes and the last 15 minutes are pretty memorable. Now, the soundtrack is um, predominantly electronic, although there are some pretty heavy sections where kind of the prog influence of, of Goblin kick in. Goblin had been the, um, had written the soundtrack for Argento's previous movie, Profundo Rosa, Rosso, which is much more guitar and bass driven, quite groovy soundtrack, quite different to this one. This one, think of it as the progenitor or the touchstone for John Carpenter and the, and the soundtracks that he would produce himself for movies like Escape from New York. So think Glacial, um, amazing keyboards and synthesizers, which, which you know, when I say synthesizer, that suggests that this is the day of, of kind of timing and programming. No, this was this is different. You when you listen to it, it's quite it's quite a I also think um you know Mike Oldfield before he did the soundtrack to The Exorcist. The Exorcist soundtrack, I think I'm I you could go so far as to say most horror movie soundtracks have borrowed from this record in some way or fashion um spatial glacial tinkle chanting um percussive breaks that are that are that are full of tension and no release which was you know the beauty of of the exorcist i suppose it's a really really cool record and it sounds amazing on vinyl this thing well Profundo Rosso sold a million copies. This thing has sold millions of copies. It is, and if you look at the lists for the greatest 
horror movie soundtracks of all time. You will often see it in and around the number one spot. Beautiful Japanese first press with Obi. Um, yeah, it's a pretty. That's a pretty special one. Now, you've heard me rave about the Japanese first press of the wall on quite a few occasions. So I'm not going to go over old ground. What I'm going to show you is how fantastic this copy is. It is in amazing condition. Look at this. I mean, there is not a mark on this. It is absolutely fantastic. By a mile, the best copy of this I've ever had. Even the insert sheet look like new. The lyric sheet, no one has opened that. I'm not going to open it. Um, if you look at the spindle holes on the records, they're pristine, which as you all know is the best way to tell whether something has been played or not. If this record has been played, I cannot detect any evidence that it has. It's magnificent. Now, it cost me a few cents to get it. I'm going to pass it on at cost price. I'm just going to put it on the list for what it cost me. Whoever snaps this up, this is your Christmas present, my friends. It is a beautiful copy. Now, why am I raving about it so much? The sound quality on this thing is majestic. Okay, on to something new. In fact, there's lots of new ones to come. What about this? The mighty status quo. This is their sixth, their sixth or seventh record, but it is a Japanese first press and it was the first record that they released on the Vertigo label. So you have a proper, it looks like an inner swirl on the white label. Um, I put this on, played the first couple of tracks. <laughs> I'm gonna make, actually, I'm gonna make an argument here. It is, in my mind, not unreasonable to say that status quo are in some small way the English ZZ top. <laughs> what I mean is three chords in the truth, two if you can get away with it, base it on the blues, uh, tight, tight, tight playing, uh, Catchy tunes, best heard in a pub, honed in a pub, in the case of both bands. Now, I'm not saying that Status Quo could wipe ZZ Top's shoes, but this record is pretty good. A um, couple of things about this one that is interesting. There's a cover version of Roadhouse Blues by The Doors. And you know, it's not embarrassing. It's long and bluesy. In fact, there are several very clear blues reference tunes on here. Um, surprisingly bluesy. The opening track, which is called Don't Waste My Time, is, you know, I think status quo by the numbers. You kind of, you, you know what that's, you know what that song is. I don't even have to tell you. But the final, the second track, Pile Driver, the title track is a rock song, not a three chord kind of, I don't know what you would describe some of them, but it's, it's full on. And uh, on the sleeve, you've got the, uh, that head down kind of denimed boogie. So yeah, Japanese first press white label or vertigo swirl of pile driver by the status quo. I bet you weren't expecting that. <laughs> now, 
this record is a pretty special record. This is the Japanese 1979 press of the Damned's debut album, Damn, Damn, Damned. One of, if not the greatest punk records of all time. Now, of course, they lay claim to releasing the first ever punk single, which is the opening track of side two of this record, which is called New Rose. Captain Sensible, Rat Scabies, the drummer, who, by the way, is freaking awesome on this record. <laughs> he really is. He is a hell of a drummer. Produced by Nick Lowe, which I think teased out some melodicism and songcraft that may have been missing otherwise. The opening bass riff of the opening track, Neat, 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 played, of course, by Captain Sensible, is as catchy now as it was back then. Yeah. Proper classic record, this one. Never had it on the list before. Lovely copy. Of course, I, I do like this label. The Stiff Records are legendary for their labels. Look at that. Pretty cool. Ah, yeah. The Dan's debut album. A uh, punk touchstone. And, uh, again, I bet you weren't expecting that either. <laughs> it's a fun list, this one. All right. Now, the next one is one that I've talked about before. This is a Japanese first press of the man who fell to earth. Who, man, sorry. Not the man who fell to earth. That was the, <laughs> that was the Bowie movie. This is the man who sold the world by David Bowie. A heavy ass, bassy, riff driven guitar fest. Such an underrated record. If you don't own it, this copy slays the Japanese first press. Is as good as it gets. I think the best that can be got. This, I think, is my favorite Bowie album. I have at least five copies, and this is the best. If you like it, grab it. Worth it. Price of entry alone for the opening track, the nine-minute glory that is the width of a circle. Easily the heaviest track that Bowie ever released, and easily one of his best. Love that album. <laughs> Not such a big fan of this one, but I know that it has its fans out there. And I found this recently in a collection I bought, which is kind of interesting. It's the German first press of Traffic's, I think it's 1974 album, When the Eagle Flies. Um, it's in wonderful condition, like really beautiful. Produced by Chris Blackwell and Traffic. Um, Steve Winwood very much to the fore. I wonder if that's the first record that they self-produced. But yeah, Traffic, When the Eagle Flies. That won't be very expensive. And the quality of the record for the price is pretty, pretty good. All right. I'm going to lay a bet that not one of you out there has this record. <laughs> this is... An album called Melodies by a Japanese city pop artist called Tatsuro Yamashita. And there he is. Now, I got a collection of city pop from the blokes in Shibuya about a year ago. And it was really popular in the markets and really unpopular on the lists. So I know there's not many of you out there who like this type of stuff. I do love the inner. It's like a kids crayon drawing of a playground um but they sent me a note about this album and said it's amazing now it's not my scene there's a song on here called christmas eve which apparently entered the japanese pop charts at some high level 20 years in a row and i listened to that just on a clip on youtube and it's a very lugubrious and produced 
kind of synth pop song. So for those of you who like your city pop, that Japanese vibe, that's an interesting one. All right, I've got some, I guess, not far off Shortcuts Royalty to go. Um, just some records that I know many of you have got and have given me great feedback on, and I've managed to track down a few more copies, so they are what they are. I love this album. This is Parade, Prince and the Revolution. Um, a dense, groovy, clattery at times, really fascinating record. Love the Japanese press. Obviously, the much missed print, genuine musical genius. One of his better records and not very expensive for the quality of the record. These are actually pretty easy to get. They must have sold a bucket load of these in Japan. And this, the pleasure principle, Gary Newman, one word, cars, one of the greatest singles of all time. And the great thing is that, you know, Airline Metal and Complex and most of the songs that make up Side One are almost as good, which is saying something. Really influential and fun and cool synth pop from Gary Newman after he'd done his stint in Tubeway Army. All right, a couple of three classics to go. The Japanese first press of the Rolling Stones tattoo you there was a trend for about i don't know 30 years that every time the rolling stones released an album the the the, the writing hack would say the, their best since tattoo you and that is because tattoo you really is the end of the golden period of you know, in many ways well, well i guess some people think some girls, well, could be some girls, could be Tattoo You. Opening track, Start Me Up, and it kind of goes on from there. Um, Hang Fire is one of their better, later, slightly later period rockers. It's a cool record. I stick it on every so often. I like the fact that it was a throwback to their earlier sounds, and they kind of rehashed some songs. It's really nice. And I like the uh, the inner as well. And not very expensive. And then two Beatles records. The 1976 series, I think it was called, was it the 30th anniversary series? I can't remember now. When the Japanese released all Beatles records. And you know who it is because the matrix number begins EAS. Like Abbey Road, EAS 80560. And the Beatles rarities, EAS 63010. These 1976 pressings, the rarities and Abbey Road are in many ways bang for buck, quality of music, quality of recording, quality of listening experience. Um, really the reason why this club exists. So they're clearly shortcuts royalty. Make it onto the list. If you don't have them, they're great. It's as simple as that. Okay, there goes list one for May 22nd. A very eclectic soul and jazz and reggae and dub list to come for list two. But there you have this one for now. Hope you enjoyed. As always, like, subscribe, comment in particular. I don't get many comments. I love it when I do. Um, all right. Thanks for watching if you got this far and see you all on Wednesday.